All right, one of the most disturbing pieces of news coming out uh, uh, this week uh, it was really news out of Israel that, uh, it, it, well, and it's, it, I read it, this is true uh, today as well, um, but uh, the, uh, the, uh, this week uh, it came out of Israel that in the so-called ceasefire negotiations with Hamas, that Israel was willing to basically, over a period of, uh, what was it, 120 days, so three periods of ceasefire, the first 40 days would involve certain release of, prison, of, of hostages, second will release the rest of the hostages, and the third 40 days would be basically dedicated to figuring out how Israel could completely and utterly withdraw from Gaza and, uh, and, and hand it over to the Palestinians. Uh, this is incredibly disturbing. Uh, uh, you know, reports out this morning are that Hamas has agreed to this plan, uh, although, of course, we do not know what the details are, and we not, do not know exactly what Israel has indeed agreed to. But it is just unbelievable that, uh, you know, seven months after October 7th, uh, we are, is it seven months or eight months we are now talking about Israel basically giving up on the one thing that it has said over and over and over and over again it would not compromise on, and that is victory. And victory, they defined victory. They told us exactly what victory was. It wasn't the same definition I have, but, but uh, uh, they defined what victory was. And... Um, Victory was the complete defeat of Hamas, the complete destruction of Hamas, the release of the hostages, and Hamas never again posing a threat to Israel. Basically, that was the commitment. I think somebody counted the times, you know, uh, uh, what's his name, Netanyahu said victory, uh, 257, I don't know, seven times. This is what they talked about. This is what they repeated over and over and over again. And just... This week, we're going to Rafa. Rafa is it. Now, now I have the sense that all of this was just a ploy. All of this was just a negotiating tactic. We're going to Rafa was just a way to squeeze Hamas to come to the negotiating table so they could cut a deal. Right? Now, what's stunning about this is, should be, <laughs> that I predicted it all. Well, then maybe that's not stunning. I'm usually right about these things. I predicted this exact behavior. And the number of people said, no, no, Netanyahu's tough. No, no, this time is different. No, no, the Israeli public has woken up. No, no, uh, you know, uh, this is it. The, the, the Israel's serious this time. And even I maybe bought into it a little bit because it seemed on certain weeks that Israel was really tough. And the language kind of coming out of Israel, particularly out of Netanyahu, was as always, the language of victory, of principle, of toughness. And as I said, God, as I said for 20 frigging years, 20 years, Netanyahu is a coward, a wimp, but worse than that, he is an indecisive coward and wimp. He won't make up his mind. Indeed, there was a story in the Israeli press yesterday about how the army now, the Israeli, the IDF, the Israeli Defense Forces, are completely fed up with Netanyahu because he can't make up his mind. Are they going to Rafa? Not going to Rafa. Uh, is, is, is he accepted the plan? Hasn't he accepted the plan? They've had a plan for weeks. Indeed, when they first went into Gaza, the IDF wanted to go immediately after October 7th, they wanted to head into Gaza. It took, it, it took Netanyahu dithering for two, three weeks to get the approval to go into Gaza. And the same over and over and over again. This is a man who cares only about power and is constantly evaluating where the winds are blowing. He cares nothing for truth, for righteousness, or for Israel. He cares about his own power. It is so discouraging. I mean, even the opposition in Israel, on the left of Netanyahu, supposedly, is saying, we must have victory, we must go into Rafah, we must dismantle Hamas, destroy Hamas completely. 
There's no opposition to that point of view. And still Netanyahu is too cowardly to actually do it. It'll be very interesting to see what happens if they agree to this ceasefire and as part of this ceasefire to total, ultimately total withdrawal from Gaza. What will happen with his right wing government members who have said from the beginning that they will leave the government if victory is not attained? Will they leave the government? Will that force a new elections in Israel in the midst of all this? What is this going to look like? But even I am, it's not a surprise, I'm just so upset. Israel, you know, it took too long to do it, you know, all of this. But it's still, it, 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 victory is there. It's there for the taking. It's in his grasp. It's not that far off. It should have been happened in the first month. It, they should have gone to Rafah in the first push into Gaza. They should have cut them off from Egypt. They should have gone to Rafah and, and done what they did, which is in the middle. They should have gone in two axes and separated the north from the south and the south from Egypt. That's what they should have done. That is basic military tactics. Don't give them an out into Egypt because they still have tunnels into Egypt. Who knows if some of the hostages have not already been smuggled into Egypt. To the Sinai and who knows from there they go. It's, so even though from the beginning I've been critical of what they've done, I still had some hope that, yeah, they'll take longer, more casualties, more this, more, more political flack than they had to take and everything. But ultimately, they'll do the right thing. Maybe, hopefully, you know, maybe it was me putting whim above reality, wish above reality. So it's just so disappointing. And I feel bad for the Israelis. I, I feel bad for the people who expected victory, who demanded, at least after October 7th, we'll see if they still demand a victory. But it really looks like within the Israeli public, the part of the public that cares more about the hostages than victory won, and the part of the party, uh, public that cares more about winning has lost. And that's just, that is just horrible, horrible for everybody. It's, yeah. Anyway, it's um, very, very upsetting in spite of the fact that I predicted it, the fact that I predicted it does not make it any less upsetting. It's still upsetting. And, and anybody who cares about what's going on over there should be unbelievably upset. I will be doing a show in Hebrew tomorrow to talk more about this and to talk more about Netanyahu and to talk more about his betrayal. I mean, uh, uh, unequivocal, his betrayal of the Israeli people, his betrayal of his mandate, his betrayal of his responsibilities as uh, Prime Minister of Israel.